Ha, it's exciting to start a new section or a new chapter with a beautiful picture. So, semi-group theory. So I made a big fuss out of semi-group theory over the entire lecture, and now we are finally getting to the point where we can do this. So this is the last chapter of the course. For me, it's a little bit of a highlight because this is stuff I really wanted to do. So what is this actually about? Let's see. So here you see a little bit of content. So today I will do uh, introduction 8.1 and then 8.2, the infinitesimal generator, only half. I do half of 8.2. All right. So here's a basic idea. We have a PDE, a differential equation, ut is d la plus u plus f of u, or any other PDE for that matter. And we really now would like to understand this as an ODE in a Banach space. Oh, there's a spelling. In a Banach space. So basically an abstract ODE. Now let's look at the ODE theory again. I know we did this a few times before, but let's do this again just now. For example, if I have the differential equation u dot equals au, where a is a matrix, then we would solve this with the matrix exponential, e to the at. Right? So then the solution is u of t equals e to the at times u0. But what do we do if a is an unbounded operator? How can we define a matrix exponential for an operator? Or we could just say an operator exponential. And that's exactly what semigroup theory is all about. So here's one idea. One idea is to write the sum representation of the exponential. So e to the at is sum n is 0 to infinity, a to the n divided by n factorial, t to the n. Let's make a beautiful box around it. Now, if A is a matrix, then this is actually a finite series uh, by the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, and so there's no issue about convergence. If A is bounded, if A is bounded, we can still write down the same series, and it converges, and it is estimated by the norm of E to the norm of A. So we can show that this will be an upper bound uh, for that series there. Yeah. But what for an unbounded operator? Right, so for example, if A is the Laplacian, can we write down the formula 8.1? Does it converge? And even if we can write down the formula 8.1, we would need that functions are C infinity, right? Because we have A to the N. So we are doing two derivatives and then again and then again and then again. We do infinitely amount of derivatives. So the question is, is there a better way to define e to the a if a is unbounded? So 8.1 is one idea, which actually doesn't really work so well. But there are other ideas how to define exponentials. And let's go through a few of them. I think I have four here, starting with idea one. And you will be surprised which one actually generalizes and which one doesn't. So let's do this bit by bit. So idea one, this one here. Uh, we could try a diagonalization, right? If, if we have a matrix A, we find the Jordan normal form. And, uh, and then we can transform a to be Q inverse JQ, where Q is an orthogonal transformation matrix, and then E to the A can be computed by Q inverse E to the JQ, and then there are methods to compute the exponential of a Jordan block of a Jordan matrix. But in unbounded Banach spaces, this is not possible, and we do not have something like a Jordan normal form in that case. So let's look at idea number two, right here. Right, so we have a limit expression for the exponential. We could write e to the a as a limit, n goes to infinity, i plus uh, a divided by n to the n. Right, if a were a number, then I'm sure you have seen this uh, limit definition for the exponential before. 
So why don't we put just an operator there? Now here we face the same problem as before with the sum because a to the n why does it do that? Come on. Because a to the n where n goes to infinity needs to be applied to a function. So we again need smooth functions and uh, repeatedly apply a. So this idea does not work so well either. Idea number three. Um, I want to hide idea number four so far. So idea number three, let's look at this. So we can use the inverse limit formula. We just replace n by minus n and that still works. So write e to the a as limit n to infinity i minus a divided by n to the power of minus n and then send n to infinity. Now to this to the minus n need to be read in the correct way and the operator way. Okay. So uh, so this really is the inverse to the power of n. And then we have the resolvent notation. So it is the resolvent to the lambda is 1 over n of a and this to the power of n. Now it turns out, as we will see later, that the resolvent is actually a very good operator. So if a is unbounded, the inverse, the resolvent, is actually a nice operator. And taking this to the power of n is often not a problem at all. So this actually will work, okay? So from the three ideas we had so far, this idea using the inverse limit for the exponent, for the exponential function actually will work. And this will be the main result of the hille yosida theorem, which we prove uh, much later. All right, and so then the fourth idea looks a very scary one so here we go it's using the Cauchy integral formula so there's a formula how to compute the exponential in a complex plane and then we just adapt it for an operator a so e to the a is 1 over 2 pi i integral over c e to the lambda lambda min, lambda i minus a inverse d lambda complex uh, path integral where C is a closed, simple, rectifiable, positively oriented curve that encloses the spectrum of A. So what does this all mean? Closed is clear. Um, right, so closed means the curve is closed. Simple means it doesn't have intersections, so it's not like an 8. Okay, so this we don't want to have. Uh, rectifiable means it can it is isomorphic to a circle, basically positive oriented so this would be uh, against the uh, the orientation of the clock so this would be like a curve C and then the spectrum of A is supposed to be inside here and if we can do that then we might be able to define a matrix exponential on operator exponential this way and this method works too this method works for analytic semigroups uh, analytic semigroups we do a little bit later and our course might run out before we get there but anyway so now you have seen if we get to do analytic semigroups we will also worry about the Cauchy integral formula so what we do is first we look at the properties which such an uh, matrix we look at the properties which an operator exponential should have. And I do this in the next little video.